So the third season is underway, and let me tell you, it is a season to remember. So we've started the season in good form. We're now four games into the season, as you can see, played four, won four, and we are six points clear of the only professional team in the division and the reigning champions, KI. But the reason we're back so early is we have just won our first trophy of the third season, beating KI in the Super Cup 3-1. Goals from McHugh, um, uh, Chuck Wemember, who we are renaming, and Junge on the score sheet as well. Financially, a huge positive win in that Super Cup. Now 215k in the bank. We, we need about a million before we can go pro. I do think the next step we need to do is to turn professional. But we're on the right track. We are making money. Well, we've managed to pick up a little gem here. An 18-year-old Brazilian in Antonio who, coming in on £35 a week, I don't think we can complain at that. I think it's a very solid sign. And let me know in the comments below what you think of this signing. Comment now because later in this video blown away that's all i'm gonna say so we're now 10 games into the season nine points clear of ki maybe it's wrong to rule out every other team but i'm really focused this season on seeing if we can get ahead of ki and yeah nine points clear of them won eight drew two undefeated in our first 10 games of the season we're more than a third of the way through jumping forward to june a couple of players have left us nordstrom being the first one Ericsson also going. We collected £3,000 for them two sales. The third player leaving us is Dan. Now, he did want to stick around, but we weren't using him. We picked up a few signings we're going to look at in a minute. And the fact that a club in our division came in from this as our first opportunity to be helping other teams in our division and letting them go there for free. I say free, I've just realised we charged some 4k. Maybe going forward we'll start doing this stuff like this for free. So the first player to look at who we signed is Benitez, an Argentine, 18 years old, £140 a week. Comes in with the idea that he will play for our B team for a couple of years and just see if he develops. I think it's worth a punt. Six foot six as well, and a fairly ambitious personality. Jump and reach of 16 say no more the next player coming in we needed a left back we've been looking for a left back comes in as a non-foreign player due to being norwegian uh upsal and i think he's a very talented player joins us from Tromsø, 275 pounds a week i think it's a high fee to pay but join us on a free i think it's a good bit of business the final signing rodriguez a brazilian again second brazilian we've signed this season 18 years old I've got to say, I think this guy has a good bit of potential. Mentally fantastic, physically decent, technically not the best, but I do think at 18 he can develop. It's another good bit of business. 70, 70 not 75, 70 pounds a week. Two-year deal. I'm very pleased with this sign. Again, another one who's going to play for our B team. Again, potentially long-term will step up. If not, we'll be able to move him on for a profit or sell him to other teams in our division. Bringing in these players to the Fair Islands League means we can then maybe move them on to other teams in our division who maybe couldn't have picked them up in the first place. And the final thing to point out at this point of June the 15th, as we are still unbeaten in the league. Won 12, drew 3, lost none. We are now only 7 points clear of KI, who have now appeared in second place after a poor start to the season. But we still top. We still undefeated. We are still semi-pro, playing against a professional team in KI. I don't think we can complain. The final thing to mention is our league reputation. We have gone from 131st ranked league in Europe to 117th, just behind the Norwegian third tier. We are now up to a one and a half star league as well, which is very nice. So definitely seeing progression. We're only in our third season. And we've already risen to the 117th best league in the in the European coefficients ranking. And also, AB, due to this being our first season, second season in Europe, we are now ranked in the European club rankings. We are up to 578th best team in Europe. Celebration time. Youth Intake Preview is here and... 
it's um it's shocking it's it's shocking so we might be undefeated in the league but we went out in the first qualifying round of the Europa Conference League a 4-1 defeat away from home to Tobel um the worst thing i think about this whole situation is the fact that we were the better team 11 shots to 8 five on target we had to their six but they scored on the ninth 40th and 45th minute and the fact they went in with three goals in the first half the tie was over we managed to get a 2-1 victory at home with um scala and michaela on the score sheet but at that point it's done it's done 4-1 defeat away from home we went out in the first qualifying round in Europe. Financially, it helped us because we got money for just taking part. So we are up to 355000 in the bank at this point, 18th of July. A couple of more outs then. For a couple of K, Toure has ended up leaving the club. He was a, a solid backup for us, but we wish him well. He's moved on, 27 years old. And Caleb has left us. Now, he was a goal score machine, 18 and 23. But he didn't want to sign a new deal. His contract was running up, run out in six months. And we picked up 20k for him. When you look at his valuation, now you would say that's a poo bit of business. But it was either sell him for 20k or lose him for nothing in six months' time. Now we have added a few players to the squad. This player who we looked at in the previous episode was coming in on a pre-arranged contract. Absolute waste of money. I accept I took a punt when I could only see half his attributes. Waste of money. Now, coming in to strengthen our defence, coming in as a foreign player, former Borussia Dortmund youngster in Nico, and he is a very, very solid 18-year-old Polish player for this level. Like, unbelievable signing, and on a two-and-a-half-year deal. Now, also join us, a Serbian 19-year-old winger stroke striker on a two-and-a-half-year deal again. And again, I think a very, very solid player. Signed on the back of Caleb leaving us. We needed to fill that gap. I'm really, really pleased with this sign. I think he could develop into a very good player. But then we smashed it out the water with by far one of the best signings I've ever brought in this early on this type of save in Mauricio. 18-year-old Brazilian. I'm getting recommended so many Brazilian players on this save. I don't have a scouting budget open. We are going to do a guide on how to save money with scouting going forward. But I have nothing active. These are just recommended from agents. And this guy is insane. So again, make sure you comment below your views on him. But I think we might have picked up somebody who can rip up the goal scoring sheets in the Fair Islands. On a side note, we're 16 games in now. So we've got 11 games to go. We're on 42 points, KI on 35, we're still 7 points clear. Oh, and we're still unbeaten. Something else I wanted to look at was our salary per annum compared to them. We are paying a quarter of what KI are spending in a year. They have a 1 million salary per year. We are spending 267k. So we are, we are spending the second highest. We've definitely spend money as we've improved this squad i think we would have been around eighth or ninth when we took over um but we can afford it we are financially in a good position but yeah they are spending four times what we are spending so the season is over before we review how the season ended for ab let's have a look at the pharaoh's national team for the first time in this video so you can see we started the year by going out in the Nations League relegation playoff. We got a 4-1 defeat away from home to Northern Ireland. We did come back and get a 3-3 draw. We were 3-0 down when we made a few tactical changes. We decided to go for a little bit more. 3-3 at home Northern Ireland. It gave me a bit of confidence and we went into the Nations League knowing that we were one of the better teams. We did play Andor in a friendly in the build-up to that, who we were due to play in the Nations League, and got a 5-2 victory away from home. And then we entered the Nations League with a 1-0 victory over Andorra on the opening day, with Carlsberg on the score sheet. A 2-1 victory away to Estonia, where they were predicted to win. We were expected to lose. Very, very nice victory. 1-0 away to Gibraltar, and a 2-0 away to Andorra. Puts us in a very healthy place first place 10 points one point ahead of estonia i'm pleased with that um if we're going to the performance side of things we have a c 
uh, competition wise they don't care um it it just appears they don't care about competitions so we can it seems we can always hold on to our job no matter what we do because they they don't care in terms of player wise we have had to let a few players leave and well release them from the Nash team due to age so we have a whole new back line going into the future season so we have Hansen who's 32 at right back there's a couple of years left in him in central defense then we have Aubergier who you can see is joining our club we're going to look into the signings I've already pre-arranged in a second who 22 years old he has been in the Faroe Islands for the last couple of years he's Danish by birth but now can play for Faroe Islands alongside him is 17 year old B36 player uh, Reslag and He's a very solid defender and he's only going to get better. That's why he's been getting given national team games at the minute. Um, alongside him is Davis, who's 33 and does need replacing, but left backs for this this national side are an absolute struggle to find. Now, one thing I would mention this year is Junge qualified to start to play for the Fair Islands. Obviously, again, Danish by birth. In the AB squad, he has played six games now for the Fair Eyes national team, scoring four goals. So, as he's been doing for AB, scoring goals regularly, he is now doing it for the Fair Eyes national team. Now we needed more depth with AB and central midfield, so we've managed to sign from um, Goethe this 20-year-old Fair Eyes player who very very all-rounded, a decent player. Comes on a non-contract. He is going to play for our B team. But he adds a bit of depth if we are really struggling with injuries. If we lost two or three of our centre midfielders, we can push him up and he can get first team football. And also, Stian Mulder, who we signed at the start of the season, we were offered £1,000 from two Norwegian clubs and B36 in our league. So we rejected the two Norwegian clubs and sold him to B36 in our league. Again, starting to build the nation. So I guess the first point of call should be the cup. And we have retained the cup title. So we are now reigning champions of this cup the last two years in a row, winning 2 0 over Goethe in the final. Mauricio and Admarsek on the score sheet then. 8 1 victory in the semi final was definitely the highlight of this cup competition, this cup run. But we are the reigning champions now in the cup. Now in the league, this happened. And we are the undefeated champions of the Faroe Islands League now. Absolutely insane. Played 27, won 22, drew 5, lost 0. I'm trying to remember the last time I went through a season undefeated. I think it would have been with Cork City a couple of FMs ago. But it's the fact that this is only our third season. We are a semi-professional club up against a professional club in KI. We are now next season playing in the Champions League. And we saw from KI last season... If you go out of that, you go into the Europa League. And if you go out of that, you go into the Conference League. So we will have a good stream of income coming in now due to this huge success. Now, in terms of transfers we have set up. So coming in over the winter already is the Fair Island's number one goalkeeper. He's joined us from Viking Goethe. He's not even their first choice keeper, but... I don't quite get that because he's miles better than the actual first choice keeper. Um, we've already mentioned um, Obersher. He's joining us from um, 07 Vester. Very, very good central defender. Um, we have a new right back. I promised I wouldn't sign any more Brazilians, but 18 years old. He is insane. Apart from dribbling. As a right back, he is a step above anything we've had. Join us for absolutely nothing. You cannot complain. Coming in from B36 is one of our defensive midfields on the Fair Islands national team. We needed still to add depth to our squad. Yes, I want to build the nation, but I also need to make sure we can push on. And the fact, again, next season we're up against a professional club in KI. We need to make sure we keep building ourselves up. And also from 07 Vesta, the top assist maker in the division this season in Kaltzberg, suggested in the comments by some of you guys, is joining us for next 
season. When we look back at the season just gone, Wagner Scala, with 19 goals and 15 assists, has been insane again. Again. What a player he is. 24 years old now, came through the academy. I cannot say enough words about this man. 19 goals from central midfield, 15 assists from central midfield. Say no more. Um, second place, Mauricio, only joined us three quarters of the way through the season, only managed to play 11 games, scored 12 goals in them games. Um, in all competitions, played 13 games, scored 16 goals. Going forward, I think we've picked up an absolute gem, and I'd be shocked if he doesn't get into 30-plus goals next season in 27 games if he stays injury-free. A couple of things I wanted to point out. Goals from corners. We were the only team to hit double figures with 10 goals from corners this season, so it does show our corner and set pieces are working well. Goals from indirect free kicks, we managed to score four as well, so I'm generally pleased with that. I think we can be definitely happy with how we've done it offensively from set pieces. In terms of goals conceded from corners, we conceded two goals in 27 games. I I don't think we can complain about that. Now, we did concede one goal from indirect free kick, but again, we shouldn't really be complaining about one goal in 27 games. Now, one of the stats I wanted to improve this season was how we retained the ball. And the fact that we finished the season with 59% possession, the highest in the league, um, I'm very pleased with that. Now, we didn't have the highest pass completion at 76%, but it is something going in next season we can work on. I've got to say I'm very pleased with how we're looking. Um, tactically, I'm happy with this tactic. I do want to adjust my wing-back tactic going into next season. I think we definitely can improve that and make ourselves a lot stronger um, with the wing-back tactic and make sure we are utilising two different tactics throughout the season going into our fourth season. I think the fact of our failure in Europe this season, it definitely shows we can improve. But I think when you review this season, the fact we won the league unbeaten, the fact we won the cup and the fact we won the Super Cup, a domestic treble, unbeaten in the league in 2024, unbeaten in all domestic competitions in 2024, the third season with AB was definitely one to remember. So thank you so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you do go down and subscribe to the channel. Drop a like on it, comment below. I've been Paul, also known as the Northman, and I'll see you next time.